This episode of the Party Loaded Podcast is proudly sponsored by Audible.com. Check out their awesome catalogue of audiobooks with over 180,000 titles to choose from. And be sure to grab a free audiobook on us and support the show by visiting audibletrial.com slash endgame. Let's party. Get this party started. It's Party Loaded, episode 5 uh, for the 15th of December. We are sitting here ready to re- record a show, chatting about video games, looking forward to it. And uh, got some friends here to do that with. We have... Um, now, I'm going to do this a little differently tonight because we've got a, uh, I guess, descending order of uh, revelations to go through. Let's start with the one who has probably the biggest one. Ollie, hello. Hello. I'm hyped up in sugar, like everyone at a party should be. And you have a, uh, a new acquisition as of today. You just got a new house. So we should probably celebrate yes. that. I leveled up my dwelling. You- <laughs> <laughs> nice. IRL. <laughs> in, in slightly descending order, we have uh, Imogen, who uh, just acquired the end to a, a very tumultuous story over the last couple of weeks. Your yeah. Xbox finally arrived. Congrats. I finally have my Xbox. Just today. <laughs> <laughs> and I cannot stop dancing to our intro music. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Well, we, we need to go into the full story of that in a minute, I think, because it's been yeah. kind of funny. Um, and Jam, who actually I should have started with this because this is by far the best one. Jam, <laughs> you and I are just under 30 hours out of seeing oh, Star Wars. Oh, so excited. Woo. So excited. Wee. <laughs> I was wondering what you were going to say for me because I'm like, I, I bought chalk milk today. No, no, no. <laughs> that's that's that my news. <laughs> Oh, cool it story. does. It does. Cool story, Jamie. Cool story. <laughs> but yes, we have midnight tickets to the Star Wars. Yep. And I'm very excited. It is good. I uh, was looking on Twitter earlier this evening and saw one person had tweeted already, apparently, who'd gone to the world premiere. And I saw like a snippet of what they wrote and then I immediately shut that crap down. <gasps> Why would you look? <laughs> I just, it was a moment of weakness. But. Oh, oh but busted, there's an embargo. I was going to say it was just general thoughts and feelings about the experience. There was no actual spoilers or anything like that. Oh, okay. And I liked what I saw very, well, very much. So. Okay. Yeah. Don't say any more though. I will not. I will I'll not. I'll smack you through the internet. <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> no, I don't I want to I have a either. feeling if he spoiled it for you, you would drive to his. You would find a car, oh. learn to drive. <laughs> <laughs> Hell would Smack rain down car. and I would end him. But look, I can and he be, would have regret. I can be a massive dick, but I do not spoil Star Wars for people, okay? Spoiler, hand shoots first. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. My hey, did you actually see that there was a really interesting uh, interview with George Lucas recently where he went through why he made the decision to reverse that in the um, the remastered editions? Yep. Yeah. Um, it was something along the lines of, oh, what was he referencing? It was a, a famous American um, cowboy of some sort. Might have been John Wayne. Yeah, it was John Wayne. And he was saying, um, you know, John John Wayne would never shoot first and that Solo was sort of apparently ba- loosely based off the character of John Wayne. So... Uh, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, and I thought, like, a lot of people give him a heap of rubbish for that, but that is actually an explanation that I can kind of understand. Like, it does seem to be consistent with it that. being a space western and all. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, kind of. So, I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be something that people would be divided on forever, and it's become such a thing mm. now that you can just never escape it. So, but anyway. It's fun. Yeah. Fun to argue it. It is. It is cool. Watch the nerd rage happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, we. I, I gotta say, for for an otherwise predictably quiet time of year, after all of the the massive sort of games titles have come out, we've had all of our big leading up to Christmas AAA releases, and you know, game awards have been and gone, and a lot of the sites are sort of you know wrapping up and and doing their their end of year roundup stuff now. There still seems to be a lot going on. I don't know mm. what it is, but so much. Yeah, it's an exciting time at the moment. I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying myself. What has everyone been up to in the last week? It actually seems like a long time since we, we sat down and recorded last, but yeah. I mean, Ollie, do you want to kick off tonight? What, what have you been up to in the, the last seven days of gaming? I can do this. So I played a bit more Fallout 4. Shocking, I know. It's <laughs> truly a twist of the ages. Bruce wait, Willis wait, wait, dead all along, sorry. We need, um, a, <laughs> we need a weekly power suit count. 
Oh, uh, hours count. Um, no, no, power suit. Let's check power on suit. Steam. Uh, 47 hours in. Right. And I'm level 52. How many and power And I've suits? just completed the Brotherhood's main anti-faction quest. So I've just obliterated two other factions. Uh, oh, shh, shh, shh. That's not a spoiler. Spoilers. <laughs> There's interfaction war. Shocking. Okay, but Imogen has a question. Oh, okay, sorry. For the third time. <laughs> How many power suits do you have? What is the weekly power suit count? Have you found any more? I'm up to nine. Nine. Oh, nine. Okay. Right. They're not complete now. There is two partial frames in there, but I have slowed down a little bit because I've got the power armor that I want. So Interesting. Oh, I see. I've got the X01 with a jump pack, so now I'm... Happy as a pig in mud. So have you actually <laughs> been wandering around with uh, Jarvis, I mean Jeeves, sort of organising that stuff for you? Or, uh... No, I've got uh, Curie with me. So yeah. it's basically a female Jarvis. Okay, cool. Interesting. I'm looking forward um, to yeah. sinking some time into this and getting up to where you are. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've done a lot of extra stuff, though. Um, I also bought a Wii U hey. for my other half. And so we spent some time playing Mario Maker, which is a lot of fun. Mm. A lot of fun. I immediately made horrible levels that she had really big problems passing because she's a SNES pro. She knows Mario every which way and what. And she had a lot of fun with it, actually. And every now and then I get texts going, oh, I just spent half an hour beating some of the 10 Mario challenges today. I'm like, oh, of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> um, and in a complete 180 of me originally bitching about it, I finished Ori in the Blind Forest. Yeah, it was interesting Ooh. hearing your feedback on this during the week. So what, what was the cause of your um, turnaround position on that one? Um, I just wanted to see if it got better, if that makes sense. Mm. It's like you don't judge a TV show just off the first half of the first episode. You kind of give it an episode or two. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I'll give it a little bit, see how we go sort of thing. And yeah, I liked certain aspects of it a lot and disliked certain aspects of it a bit. But there's definitely more positives than there is negatives when it comes to that game for me. And I'm assuming the negatives are similar to what we discussed last time, where you know you weren't a huge fan of the double back um, le- sort of levels and things like that, or was there something? You- yeah, I found the double back mechanic just is there as padding, like it's not necessary. Like it is kind of cool. Going, wow, this bit was really easy. Why did I struggle on this so much? Oh wait, I didn't have three different extra powers. Mm. That's why. It did get a little grindy. And I did feel that once you get the bash power, enemies just aren't scary anymore. So everything that launches an attack at you, you can just go, no, I bash it the other way, Mm. or I bash it back at him. So I found that I didn't bother with attack spells at that point. I literally just bashed stuff along, unless it was like super time sensitive, in which case then I flamed them. But even if if it is time sensitive, you kind of freeze time while you're doing that, so it doesn't matter too much. Yeah, exactly. So... More as in, like, if there's a rolling event that happens, like, with the various escapes. Yeah. And that's not a spoiler. You escape from places. It's a timed event. No one lynch me, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the escapes were definitely the strongest part for me. I found the bits in between a little too easy compared to the earlier stuff. Like, the game difficulty definitely dropped off, apart from the escapes, because they were, like, super intense, must time and do everything perfectly. Whereas the other bits just like, I explore, I died. Oh, well, whatever. Hmm. That's the bit I need to do now. Yeah. Nice. So um, there's no alternate endings in this one, obviously. So um, your, your total play time was, what, like six and a half hours or something, wasn't it? Yeah, around there Yeah. Nice. And that was like 89% complete, I think you said? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. So you, it, again, just sort of speaks to our different game styles because you, you're missing 10% of the game. I just don't know if I could do that. <laughs> well, you say it's like 10% of the game, but it's really 10% of... I put a little secret power up in a corner somewhere mm. Mm. as opposed to you've missed like a key bit of plot or like a cool bit of character backstory. No, you've literally just missed a power up somewhere in a corner. That is a fair point. Yeah. You, you're not exactly shortcutting the game experience too much by missing. No, things. I still in the end had the same like plot as everyone else that plays the game. Yeah. That's a nice plot. Mm. I still think the little tragedy at the start, was unnecessary despite later plot developments mm. but still i'll stand by that statement yeah the end plot is very nice i have enjoyed the ending mm. all right um jam how about you i am two-thirds of the way through ori now i um i'm surprised at ollie's turnaround and i'm glad he kept going with it it's cool mm. 
but I get stuck at the escapes and then I go, nope, <laughs> I need a break. Because <laughs> uh, by then my hands are all just claws um, <laughs> around my controller. <laughs> I've been frustratingly clutching it, trying to time everything just right. Um, it's so technique. cute. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say claws. That's hilarious considering who the main antagonist in Ori is, but anyway. <laughs> har har. <laughs> um, I played a little bit of Fallout, not very much. Um, Heroes of the Storm. We've been having some excellent games and I'm getting uh, more and more attached to my warrior Muradin. He's so cool. Ha- has that game or has that game not sort of just become the sleeper hit of the month? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm super surprised that I'm into it and it helps so much that we've got a great group who mm. plays. And, you know, it's usually easy to find five on any given night, nearly. Well, now we're, we're struggling awesome. to cut that number down to five, it seems. I know, mm. I know. It's wicked. So just get um, it up to ten, then. <laughs> Yo, that's what yeah. we really need to do. So, yeah, Ollie. Yeah, Ollie. No. <laughs> yeah, come on. Murders. I don't do murders. <laughs> um, the other thing I've played in the last week or two, really, is some Minecraft. Imogen and I jumped on the other night. Woo. And we've made ourselves um, in a new world on realms, a uh, little party loaded uh, town, mm-hmm. a base with the logo, which you've been, I don't know, wiring. Yeah, I tried to. It didn't really work out. I'm going to have to go back and find out a different way of doing it. So well, I think it's going to look awesome. Yeah, I, I've kind of lost some of my redstone mojo in that game. I need to go back and learn some of the basics again, it seems. Mm, mm. Pick up them skills. Mm, yep. Yeah. But, yeah, that's that's been my week so far. Nice. So, Imogen, what are you thinking about building in Minecraft? Should you be sinking a bit more time into that? Or are you going to be massively distracted again now that you've gotten your toy? Yay! Probably. <laughs> well, we'll talk. I'll talk about what I have already played, and then I'll talk about the Xbox later. But uh, Heroes of the Storm has been awesome. I can't believe I haven't played this game from the beginning. It speaks to me. And I feel so badass playing that game, which is the fun <laughs> part of Blizzard. I've always enjoyed they make you sort of super invested in your character. Mm. It is fun uh, at the moment. We've got a friend who plays with us who plays similar characters to me. And every time it's like, so what are you going to play? I don't know. You would, I'll play. No, no, no. You, no, 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 you go. You, no, 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 no. You. Your turn. Play this <laughs> no, no, you hang up. No, 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 you hang up. No, you hang up. Yeah. <laughs> so that's been really good. And it's forced me to, I think I'm going to, look at doing sort of tank based stuff similar to jam because Ooh. that's something that we are missing um, we need to practice chogal chogal mm. oh, oh, we, we had to talk about our chogal experience that was hilarious oh, um, so good i played a whole bunch of hearthstone because i've sort of started getting interested in that again plus i was traveling for work so hearthstone's a really sort of easy game just to sort of flip open play a game and close and you know, that kind of thing. Uh, it's been really interesting. Uh, I managed to lose quite a bit and still ma- – I got another epic the other day. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with my cards to date. Uh, I played Ori again, but now I feel like the worst gaming person in the world because I convinced all you guys to play it and I'm only 30% <laughs> of the way through. So <laughs> You totally raged out. It's me, hilarious. And well, I'm sure we'll talk about this in other episodes when we talk about completionists. I definitely am not in that camp. Uh, if anything, Ori is at this point just ahead of level with me for whatever reason. I can't get my brain to work that bash control that Ollie finds oh so easy. I'm a naturally <laughs> just, violent person. <laughs> maybe that's it. Um, are, I keep are you flinging using Ori keyboard? Into- no, I'm losing control. I keep accidentally flinging myself into spikes. So I just um. I need to I need to the. Jamie gave me a tip the other day, which was I just need to slow down when I do it. And I think that's it. I panic as soon as that thing comes up. I'm like, oh, God, sort of point and go. <laughs> and, yeah, so, I, uh, yeah, I've got to spend some more time on that. And I played Minecraft with Jam, which was super fun and brought back so many memories of all of the projects that I have yet to complete in our other world. <laughs> 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 like uh, the gold digging one. Everyone remember oh, I was yeah. building that? Oh, God, yes. Yeah. <laughs> How many? That's like... Yeah. Three rows done out of many? No, they was- were, oh God, I think I'd have, I've done 25 at this stage. <gasps> really? I oh. feel control in the middle of that. So we should probably fill uh, people in who are listening. Building that thing was a monster. So p- p- people who are listening, basically Imogen tried to build a mini game that involved um, sort of digging for gold in like a big block of stone. It's 100 by 100 block. Yep. Yep. Kind of nuts. So- <laughs> I built 
manually because I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to say anything. <laughs> yep. I was entertained for, uh, but you know, unsurprisingly, please see previous comment about being a completionist. I had not finished it. <laughs> I got distracted doing something else. Um, I got a bit of uh, gaming uh, e- uh, ADHD clearly, mm. and I played a new game I picked up this week, which was Undertale. Which is great. Oh, is it? Enjoy it. Mm. Yeah. I wanna, Tell me. I want to talk to you about this because I've started as well. Okay. Mm. Well, do you want me to talk about Undertale or do you want me to talk about the Xbox? Uh, <laughs> just briefly on Undertale first. I think we'll probably have to go cover it in detail in a future episode because I'm only like 20 minutes in. Um, okay. But I've got some opening thoughts. So I'm just curious what your, yours are. Well, how would you describe it? Because it's not a genre I've played a lot of before. So um, what would you genreize it is as? <laughs> well, so so far it reminds me a little bit of the very first Legend of Zelda game, um, in that it's like an eight-bit style top-down, I, I guess, roaming RPG. Um, yeah. But it's got some really interesting mechanics, and the way that it treats your encounters with uh, monsters is unlike anything I've seen before. And I think it's really intriguing um, that you you don't have to fight your way out of every problem. There's like a lot of uh, you, know, you can run away. Yeah. You can, you can flirt with the monsters. Yeah. You can yeah. offer them compliments. Mm. <laughs> uh, you can um, put them down or you can laugh at their jokes. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they'll let you run away if you laugh at their jokes. Yeah. yeah. But at the moment, I've just been running away because I'm liking the storyline. So we can talk about it in more detail later and no spoilers, but I'll have to talk to you uh, in person about how you – did in the sort of first decision-making thing because this does have alternate endings. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, I'm a horrible person, let's just say that. So if you've played Undertale, you know what I did. You know what I did. Oh. <laughs> um, wow. You left someone to die, didn't you? Uh, no, it's worse. Uh, <laughs> you're going to have to play it now. Uh, I'm curious so, more than else. Even I'm wondering yeah. what you're talking about. Maybe I'm not up to that yet. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, so, um, and I have to say, the reason I played it is because I heard uh, other people talking about it, uh, and they were mentioning about the two skeletons that you meet, and these guys have received internet fame like nobody's business. There is fan fiction out there for days considered, uh, with Sans and Papyrus, and if you haven't noticed, their names are fonts, and when they talk in the game, they talk in the fonts. And they are just, it's pun after pun, all about bones and skeletons and, oh, it's just awesome. I'm enjoying it wholeheartedly. It makes me laugh. I'm not finding it particularly Steam. difficult. It is on Steam, yeah. It's only $10 on Steam. Hmm. And for a game with alternate endings, which, you know, has a replay, it's, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying it. And all I wanted was to do a sort of a narrative-based game where I just got to make decisions and things. So that was a good choice for me. I enjoyed it. I have enjoyed it. Okay. I have not finished it yet. Here's a question for you. How mm-hmm. how much have you played of it? Oh, maybe only 40 minutes or so, 50 minutes. Oh, okay. Because I was going to ask if it does the whole um, Deus Ex thing where it's like, here, you, you have three ways of doing this. Like, you have the social, the stealth, and the combat way of doing things. But then at mm, the end, really you shoot much. you into the combat way. Mm, no, I get the impression. I, I get the impression that the decision making is a lot more open in that regard. Ollie. I don't okay. think you actually have to take one particular way or not. Yeah, because no. I found that with Deus Ex started off very similar like that as well. The latest one, I should say, Human Revolution, where it's like, here's your three ways of doing ninety percent of the scenarios, but every now and then, no, you have to fight. Well, apparently, it's possible to finish this entire game without a single fight. Correct. Nice. Mm. Or you can just run that. away. Yeah. yeah. So if you're in the middle of the, some of the puzzles your sort of spawn monsters and it can get a bit frustrating. So I'm like, I run away, I run away, I run away just to get through sort of a part. Um, mm. That's only happened to me once. But, uh, yeah, I, it's, I, I'm enjoying it. I think it's a nice little game. And for $10, pff, I spend more of that on, you know, two days worth of coffee. So um, <laughs> I, I just bought it. Did you you just buy it? You know what, guys? I'm going to say something, and we need to make a note of this. You guys need to start suggesting games that I play because at the moment we're playing all the games (laughs) that I suggest. This is true. Jamie, did you you just buy two days worth of coffee to keep us up during the movie? It's probably not necessary. (laughs) (laughs) Lol. (laughs) I agree to the terms and purchase. (laughs) Done. I unfortunately live in Australia. Purchase. (laughs) <laughs> PayPal is a dangerous, dangerous thing. 
<laughs> Mine straight to credit card. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Wee! It's <laughs> that from my Steam account. Why, my money? Yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Luke? What have you been playing? Uh, I'll start with Undertale. So um, I only literally just loaded that up yesterday because I got to about 2 2 a.m. and decided that I wanted to do something else before going to bed. So that was an awesome... Empire. I hate your button so much. Uh, um, Yeah, so I I had purchased it a couple of nights previous to that and then got caught up playing Heroes. So um, loaded it up, started playing it, um, realized very quickly that I like screwed the pooch on the very first encounter because I didn't realize what the heck was going on. Um, So I think that's kind of locked me into uh, on the training dummy uh no not uh, that the thing before that's the, that. i think it's the one yeah i think it's no oh, yeah okay we're gonna have to talk about it in this in real person yeah yeah there yeah. was controversy on the internet when people spoil it <laughs> yeah that's it well there's controversy on the internet about this game anyway which i'll get onto in a sec um which i've found quite interesting but uh yeah like i don't know I think maybe I'm just spoiled coming off Ori in the Blind Forest because I've got to say the first 20 minutes hasn't really taken me too much. It seems like a game with a lot of potential and I'm really not in a position to judge it properly having only gone in this far. But um, like people have been raving about this game, like just crazy amounts of love for it. And I, I kind of expected it to sort of hit me a bit quicker than it has, I guess. So Yeah, I get that. Uh, especially, you know, it's got a real cult following. It sort of feels very look at this cool indie game and maybe some people are riding that wave a little bit like everyone else thinks it's cool so it's definitely cool i don't know it's very it's obtuse i don't know i i made some choices in the beginning that and you know i'm a bit of an emotive person anyway so i was already attached yeah (laughs) when i was a horrible human being (laughs) you're not wrong about the um the cult following but the the thing the controversy that i was referencing is i've just been reading today there's been a bit of uh, scuttlebutt around the net about a uh a reddit um community that's been going nuts over there's like oh no sorry not reddit there's a game facts yeah you you read about this yeah Mm -hmm. so they're they're doing a huge poll on game facts um website at the moment called best game ever and uh it's the sort of one where they put up two games at a time that sort of compete against each other in a vote and people vote for which one they think is the best um and you know this is going back deep 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 into the catalog um and undertale's been up obviously and it's been absolutely romping through the um votes um but it's been winning some votes against some pretty hardcore like defining games like um it actually won against super mario world which i'm just like what Um, and ocarina of time yeah one against ocarina of time it won against all of the pokemon um games which i was just like whoa whoa Whoa! <laughs> it won to against quote PAX 2015. Yeah. <laughs> it won against Fallout 3, and not by a small margin either. So yeah, there's a lot of controversy on this at the moment, and a lot of it's been sort of hitting on Reddit um, because people have been going, you know, how how do they justify this being better than this? And you know, typical social social justice warrior sort of you know ranting, and I. It's not clear why this is happening, like whether there's some sort of massive community out there that's just having a bit of fun and trolling the crap out of the uh, the process or not. Um, <laughs> there's a few things that they suspect might have the game might have going for it, like um, you know, there's a lot of how can I say outside the box thinking in terms of uh, social norms with this game. Like there's a you know the game has an androgynous protagonist. Um, there's lots of different relationships on uh, at various levels with various genders. Um, you know, a lot of the characters have to go through sort of emotional challenges as opposed to just combat related stuff. Um, the fact that, you know, we said before, you can actually beat the game without combat. You know, there's a lot of different sort of things that are differing it from the norm that it's got mm. going for it. And it's drawing a lot of attention for that reason. But it makes me wonder whether it's just that or whether it's because it's actually a good game gameplay wise. And I'm definitely not far enough in to understand the difference. Yeah. Yet. See, for me, mm. those reasons make it sound like hooray, it aligns with my views on how things should work. Thus, I like it, which is fair. That's a valid viewpoint. Yeah. But I agree with you. The game still needs to be a good game. It's like you enjoy a book just because they make a statement about feminism or whatever that you, you're you like, yep, that's great. So this makes this book good. Well, no, the book still has to be a good book. Yeah, exactly. And likewise with this game. This, yeah. Yeah. It sounds like people are just tacking onto the issues or ideas that it puts forth. Mm. Like, don't get me wrong, I haven't played it yet. I can't comment on the gameplay one iota. If it's a great game, then that's completely fair. But yeah. from what Maybe you've described... Is, yeah. 
it it's, sounds like people are latching onto ideas. Rather than it's hard game. to say the way though, man, because I just don't have that much time in it yet. Like I could mm. be just speaking out of my ass completely with, without having any <laughs> understanding of how it gets. Party loaded. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's right. Also, it's, it's, <laughs> well, we, we, will, we will commit to talking about this in detail at a later date. Uh, I think we probably need to. Probably next give... week. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> probably. Uh, but uh, look, I'm I'm intrigued because this is happening at the moment. I think this is actually enhancing my desire to want to get in deeper and work out what the heck's going on. Um, but, I mean, you know, this is often the difference between people being fans of a game and people being rabid fans of a game as part of a community mm-hmm. of rabid fans. You know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. it could also I be a point in time fans. thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's the flavor of the minute and this minute they're having that battle for best game ever. Mm. Therefore, you know, it's it's getting it's the attention. Trending. Like it's just it's it could just be a balance of different factors, but yes, I'm I've purchased now and I want to see what this is about too. Yeah, I think sounds I'll, hilarious. I think I'll just know it. I played it because of the hype, because I hear from so many people <laughs> that it's great, and because it was voted. Don't I might be incorrect on this, but I think it was in the Games for Change category. Uh, I think so. It was definitely in best yes. narrative. Yes, yeah. it yeah. was definitely in the Game Awards. Mm. Yeah. So uh, I, what I did was basically, you know, I want to play an indie game or a small game and I looked at all the ones in the game awards. So if those guys could be nominated up against the big guys, then they might be worth my time. And I do know that there's been a lot of hubbub for lack of a more Gen Y term (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, around it. Uh, So yeah, we'll see. Mm. I don't know. I, I, I like the combat system. I think it's interesting. Took me a really long time to figure out. Uh, I actually started playing and then life, and so I stopped playing before I got to another save point, so I had to start all over again, and I found that that's when I became the worst person ever because I think I had started to choose a path that was maybe a little bit more efficient. Mm. And you gave uh, into the dark side. <laughs> yep, yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. Darth Mimo. It's that first <laughs> yeah. flower encounter. Yes, yes, that's exactly mm. where... I got the impression that things might change rapidly. So, mm, all right, we'll revisit this one. I'm looking forward to it. Well, I, I don't mind playing games like this, even if I, fi- I find out that I hate them and I don't think they're good games. But if they are interesting because they're drawing a lot of attention and I get the chance to go in and make up my own mind, I actually enjoy that experience regardless. So, yeah, yeah. we shall see. Anyway, other stuff I've had on, I finished Ori in the Blind Forest. I have so much mad love for that game. Oh, my God, incredible. Just blew me away from the point that we talked about it uh, last week did not even scratch the surface of how good it got uh, to my mind (laughs) so yeah i was um very very happy with that i do stand by what ollie and i were saying last episode though and my issues are a little different to his i've realized in that i didn't have a problem with the tragedy at the beginning i had a problem with it not connecting to the main sort of drama going on like i thought the two things were largely disconnected and that was oh okay we haven't had our real life conversation because i have my theories okay cool we need to get into that but anyway Mm. at the end of the game everything wraps up nicely in a fairly you know neat little bow so um you know, it is a very happy ending. I'll, I don't think um, anyone would expect anything too different. Spoilers. Yeah. Oh. So spoilers. <laughs> Everyone lives happily. Oh, oh damn it. Every we'll time. see. We'll see. <laughs> What's the point? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. game, game is incredible, though. If you haven't played Ori in the Blind Forest, get out and do it. It kicks ass. And the final um, level, um, once you got past the uh, main challenge where it really sort of starts to blend the final story elements with the actual level that you need to do. I love the hell out of that. It was so good. You're talking about the boring lava level? Uh, Yeah, but the later half of that. So Okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about because the first half of it was like, eh, but the second half I thought was awesome. So Okay, okay, yeah. you need to stop talking now. Yeah, we'll stop. Yeah. I'm not there yet. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Four out of four party <laughs> members would recommend. I, I, would give, I would give this game a solid five out of seven. So, yeah. <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> Obscure reference. Yeah, yeah. Some, some people references. might get that. Um, Hello to the two people who understand that joke. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, Minecraft did a little bit of Minecrafting. Um, going to have to relearn a bunch of stuff in there, apparently. So, yep, that's going to be fun. We spent a lot of time just going, huh, why didn't that work? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, um, Hearthstone. So let's talk about Hearthstone for a minute because there has been a bit of stuff on this week. Um, so the fourth and final wing of the League of Explorers came out. 
um, which basically turned the... Now, the thing I love about this this particular um, adventure is that it has had a really strong narrative to it. So you've basically been searching for um, parts of the staff of origination, which is like this magical artifact that, you know, holds great power and you're, you're trying to find it to put it on display at a museum sort of thing, you know, very Indiana Jones or Harrison Jones, I should say. And uh, you find the three components of this staff in the first three wings of the adventure. And then in the final wing, the staff basically gets stolen and you have to hunt down the dude who stole it. Now, um, the dude who stole it is called Rafam, the arch thief, and he's actually one of the bosses that you have to fight during the wing. Um, the wing is really interesting. Compared to the other three, which had its challenges, the fourth wing starts off hard. Like, the difficulty level jumps up massively. Um, so much so that in the second um, battle you have to do, the um, the boss that you're up against has a hero power that actually prevents him from taking more than one point of damage at a time. And he starts off with the full 30 health, so... Is that one damage per turn or one damage per minion attacking? Uh, one damage per source of damage. So Okay, it, that's less BS than what I was thinking. Well, initially, I thought it was that. Like, I thought it was one point per turn. I was like, oh, my God, no, end that, badly. that would actually be horrible. <laughs> yeah. No, no, but as it turned out, um, no, it is one point per source of damage, so that gives you quite a few options. Like, there's a lot of... Um, like one, one example of a good spell in this situation is a, uh, a one cost card called Magic Missile. It's a mage spell, mm. which does three separate one point yeah. hits at, at random things. So if he's the only thing on the board and there's no minions, then he's going to take all three of those hits, basically. So there's ways you can get around it. Um, so you, you definitely want to customize your deck for those sorts of challenges. It was good to sort of break out of the box and think about that a little bit. But the one that really ripped me out of the box was the one immediately following that, where you, where you come up against Arch Thief Rafam for the first time. And um, basically, he, as you're selecting your deck for the challenge against him, he actually trash talks you while you're on the deck select screen. And he says, are you sure that's the deck you want to use? And he's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so the, the challenge starts and then the motherfucker steals your deck from you. <laughs> language <laughs> oh my goodness that's uh, hilarious yeah he literally just rips it out and yet you get given a crappy one in its place um and then have to try and beat him like against your own deck and it is <laughs> hard <laughs> so I found um some amazing ways to work stories into a card game i know it's just really amazing. cool yeah so you you go back into that one a second time and just try to build the most rubbish deck you possibly can and even that's difficult because he has a hero power that basically gives him random uh, minions during the battle as well so even if you give him total turd then he can still bring in decent stuff outside of the game so um but yeah no it was really cool and uh some lots of good cards in that expansion too so um and some really fun ones. The uh, the big one at the end is you you get a legendary uh, character called Elise Starseeker, who um, basically buries a treasure map in your deck. And if you find the treasure map um, during the game, uh, you summon the Golden Monkey, which basically turns your entire remaining deck into legendary cards. So oh. Oh. adequate. Yeah, <laughs> it it sounds awesome, but it actually can be a bit of a double edged sword because like if you've got a deck that focuses on like you know removal or doing direct damage, all that gets replaced is replaced with legendary minions. So that might not actually be what you need to win the game. So mm. yeah, oh, and a lot of them are really expensive mana wise as well. Well, some of them are not necessarily great for you either. Like there's a couple of low cost legendary minions that actually offer bonuses to you and the opponent. So um, and the trade off is that they are really really low cost to get out. So, yeah, it's like interesting. the gorilla one that gives you bananas. Yes. Yeah, he's a good example of that King Muckler. Um, That's the one. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, really fun. Love it. Flavorful. Um, I'm jazzed about the game at the moment um, and looking forward to the next expansion, which I'm sure won't be too far away. Um, and a Hearthstone Curse update off the back of last episode. So, uh, <laughs> after I got my new phone and uh, started losing constantly, I probably... Um, <laughs> At the time of about three days ago, had uh, hit about five full ranks lost and about 20 games straight lost, which is probably an all-time low for me in the game. Um, but then immediately following that, I got a free pack from my weekly brawl and I got a pack from finishing an arena run and uh, cracked both and got a legendary in each, one of which was a golden one. So That's amazing. I think the Hearthstone Karma worked itself Swings out. and roundabouts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. And then immediately when that had happened, I started winning don't nonstop. Yeah, don't <laughs> complain or the Blizzard gods will get you. <laughs> That's it. Yep. Thanks, Blizz. Yeah. Thanks, Blizz. <laughs> Dear yep. Blizz. For Christmas, I would, <laughs> I would like some cards. Okay, thanks. Yes. Bye. <laughs> 
yeah, so Hearthstone's cool, and uh, Heroes of the Storm, loving the crap out of that game again. Uh, I've started playing with another new hero, so I'm onto my third um, hero now after as many weeks, I think. So I'm playing now with Nazebo, who is the Diablo uh, Witch Hunter character, or as I like to call him, Nazebro, because he's awesome. Um, <laughs> running around with him. <laughs> Only you call him that. That's but okay. it. Uh, so he, his big thing is he's actually a specialist. So he doesn't fit into the standard roles of assassin or uh, warrior um, or support because he doesn't really heal. Um, so he has his own set of abilities which kind of do different things. But what I found he's really good at is a setting setting up assassinations for other characters in your team. So um, one of the key abilities he's ha- he has is called Wall of Corpses, which basically raises a ring of mm-hmm. ghouls around like a spot on the ground. And the idea is you try and trap enemy heroes inside that spot because the, the ghouls sort of come out of the ground and do damage. But because they're in a ring, they also lock them down from being able to move. So if you can summon your Wall of Corpses in the right spot, you lock them down and then everybody else in your team can just wail on them for a second or two. If. So Yeah, if. Yeah, Big you, if. You can screw it mm. up. I have done it many times. <laughs> I've saying, been trapped in your screw-ups. Yeah. Well, uh-huh. Not only have I dropped my own team members in it, I've actually walked in to do it myself. I don't know how <laughs> I managed that. Uh, but, yeah. It's true. I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I have witnesses. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. I love that game, though. It's we should probably cool. talk about our Chogal experience because we did get Chogal and it was a very exciting time for everybody involved. Yeah. So... Yay. I decided that after um, us sort of talking a bit about it the last few episodes, I was sick of waiting and decided to uh, take the front foot in obtaining uh, Chogal. Um, and just to recap how you do that is basically Blizzard released it at uh, BlizzCon and it's been like a viral distribution. So to, in order to get Chogal, the two-headed ogre in the game, you have to actually play as one of the heads with someone else who has the character. And if you win two games um, playing as one of the heads, then you get the character on your own account. So I basically just hopped in the general chat and just said, hey, has anyone got Chogal and want someone to buddy up with them? Found like three people straight away, jumped in, won two games, got him, and then started spreading them around to all of our friends. So... I think the best thing, and this just speaks again, I'm going to have to have a Blizzard count of how many times I say I love Blizzard. But the way that they have done that is so clever for your sake, Ollie, because the way that the reason why um, Luke got so many people wanting to play with him is because if you play four games, win four games with someone who does not have the character, you then get 2,000 gold. So not only have they made it. Game currency? Uh, That's enough for one of the lower ranked heroes, yep. Okay. Yeah, cool. yeah. You, so basically, you get a free Chogal on top of the ability to buy another entrance level character. Uh, and so that's how they are encouraging people to seek out people who don't have him. So rather than it stopping and people going, no, I don't want to give him out because I want to keep him for me and my team and he's my whatever precious, else. Et he's my Yeah, exactly. Nerd. Uh, you know, it's encouraging people. So when, you know, Luke jumps on and says, does anyone have Chogal? Of course you've got people because like, yes, then I can get my 2000 gold. Thank you, kind stranger. Mm. It's so, it's so clever. Everybody Um, wins. Everybody wins. And whoever the last person is in our group is going to have to go play with a random. (laughs) 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 Because we are running out of people who do not have Chogal. That is true. That is true. (laughs) Yeah, no, he, um, as it turns out, is a ton of fun to play as well. So. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I was getting into character and doing all the voices. (laughs) Oh, no, that wasn't fun. (laughs) So I've Chogaled with Luke. Mm-hmm. Uh, both, so I played the legs and the magic, and I did the same with Jamie, mm-hmm. and different experiences both. Mm. Mm. Oh, is that uh, is that because one was a lot nicer than the other? Well, in, in my defence, when when Imogen and I played, I think it was Imogen and I. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Um, we were yeah. halfway through a game, and um, I spilled a beer all over myself and had to like stop walking basically and for a second. Is. That's yeah, right. he's like, I I'll be right back. That. I'm like, that, that's cool. I'll just, I'll just cast spells into oblivion. <laughs> that, that's fine. Let me just stand in the corner of the map stand doing nothing. Here. Yeah. Um, also playing with other people, and you know, someone would do the call of like, everyone come top, and I'd be like, Luke, Luke, are we going? Luke, Luke are we going? <laughs> yeah. I just, are we, are we going to be in the them? other lane, going help. Help, and, help, and, and meanwhile, I'm, I'm madly help. scurrying, trying to stop beer from dripping into our soundboard so that it <laughs> screws up our future, future recordings. Uh, no, so. no, no. It, that was Priority before blue. beer. Yeah. That was before beer. Uh, <laughs> and then playing with Jamie, it was just an awful lot of, sorry, I'm sorry, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm <laughs> sorry. Too. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, wait, sorry. I should oh, line no. him up so that you can attack. Oh, 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 hang on. No, this, this place doesn't work. Oh, I'll circle oh, around. Oh, whoops. 
<laughs> the bomb teacher but was, it was so fun. Good. So one, your uh, Cho throws out a bomb and he's like, bombs away. And then the uh, girl character has to detonate it at an opportune time. And uh, I got to the stage where I'm like, okay, if you're going to play Cho and I'm girl, you need to yell bomb on top of his sound effect because I missed it every single time. We, we were doing all right you- with that when I was um, detonating it though. Like, yeah. Did you, when Luke and I tried the, the first time round, uh, I was the legs and I was just throwing them out, throwing them out. And then I swapped with Luke and started <laughs> pulling the magic out and I'm waiting for the bomb and I'm waiting for the bomb. <laughs> and then like a couple of minutes later, Luke, are you throwing bombs? Am I missing? He's like, oh, crap, I thought you were doing that. <laughs> it's just so funny when you're flipping back and forth remembering who's uh, doing uh, what. Yeah, that I think hilarious. I played a game with Anthony where I forgot that I was the legs, so we swapped and I was <laughs> just waiting for him to move and he was waiting for me to move. <laughs> Did you have a go at him? Because that's the best. No. Like, Come on, no. move. Why oh, not wait. moving, you idiot? If, if it was Luke, I would have had a go. But. <laughs> Oh, it's, Anthony well enough to yell at him yet. It's, it's amazing how much the antagonism perfectly mirrors what a two-headed ogre would be going through. Oh, yeah. The best part is that it merges your names. So oh, uh, yeah. on uh, Heroes of the Storm, I am Imi B. Look me up. Uh, or don't. <laughs> uh, and then, obviously, Luke, yours is Malignant. And so when it joined us together, we became imminent. Yep. <laughs> so fantastic. I loved it. I loved it. And then what do we were? Uh, Jimmy. Uh, Jam- Jammy B. Jammy B. Jammy yeah. B. We were Jammy and, B. Uh, yeah, what was the. Oh, I think I was just Immy 4 4 or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when well, we flipped. Okay. Uh, so that yeah. was pretty cool. It was good. It was um, good. Yeah, there's been some fun sort of. Oh, apart from when I was with Dave, who is Wildcard, and it was uh, uh, Willy B. <laughs> so that was fun. <laughs> uh, oh, much so hilarity. Good. So it was. It was just lots of fun, and I. It would be. You know, we're not very effective. I would say, as a character, you would have to have a very specific character team to make him worth it, mm. and you'd probably have to have a pair of people who were incredibly strong at Chogal because. The point of having those two people in one person is that they hold a lane themselves, basically. And at this point, I don't know that we found a pair who are capable of that. I Maybe if we had Jamie and, and Andrea or someone like that, Ooh, that would that'd be good. Mm. Or, you know, Dave and Andrea. Um, mm. or, or, or Andrea and anyone because she's carrying our entire team. Sure. <laughs> Just Andrea on two laptops. <laughs> oh. You know what? I think she could pull it off. Yeah. I think she probably could. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, something like that would be cool. But, yeah, so w- w- it's so much fun, just hilarious and frustrating, but mostly hilarious. Yep, yep. Well done, Blizzard. Well done. Good job. Damn straight. <laughs> Damn straight. That company's going to get so much more money next year. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, we should um, talk about uh, some, some news uh, and uh, stuff that's actually been happening around the place. Jam, you want to kick off with the, the GTA stuff because I know that you're interested in that? Well, yes, about a half an hour before we started, I jumped on GTA um, to see the Executives and Other Criminals DLC. Oh, my God, I need more money in game Mm. fast. So this is for Grand (laughs) Theft Auto V online, we should clarify. Online, online, there's some new clothes, there's some new weapons. I think I got a heavy or some kind of heavy pistol and a switchblade. Mm -hmm. Um, But, oh, the yacht, the super yacht. I think you need ten million to fully pimp out the most oh, expensive version. Ten million. <sighs> how, how, much yeah, that that golden, how much is that golden? How much is that golden jet that all. came out? Oh. That, there, was Sorry, a, Luke? there was a golden jet that was like twenty million, wasn't it? Or was that less than? Oh, that? Was there? Oh, I didn't bother with that. Yeah, That's like the previous expansion. Yeah. yeah. There's new properties too. You can buy high end apartments, and you can actually select the decor. There was about uh, on the one point one million dollar apartment. I had a quick look. There were about eight choices. Uh, for decorating from, you know, modern to vibrant to moody, which would be really neat if you wanted to customise and be slightly more individual than, you know, every time you walk into someone else's apartment seeing the same thing. Mm. Um, and also houses on stilts up in Vinewood Hills. I had to walk around a few of them. I couldn't go inside to see without buying them. I'll have to jump online, as Ollie mentioned. I just really wanted to be able to look through the windows and see, you know, how, how people were living in them. That's all. Or just nothing creepy. But, um, yeah, it's cool stuff. You can have pajamas. 
but <laughs> you cannot have pajamas and UGG boots at the same time. Uh, it's Boo. very great, disappointing. Great to see you've got your priorities in order there, Jim. Well, <laughs> scary mask pajamas, bare feet. Eh, it doesn't really work. I wanted UGG boots. No, you're Can an you actual barefoot? serial killer at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Just walking around people's houses. No, don't screw windows. that. Don't, don't walk around. Power around in your new uh, turreted limo. Oh, yeah, yes. That I looks really amazing. That. Mm. Uh, yeah. So the other thing that I, I really like the sound of as well is that apparently you're going to be able to hire other players as bodyguards. So um, with you've got like a new organization <laughs> no hiring one's mechanic. Hiring me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I would totally hire you, Mimo, because you, you'd be the most awesome flak jacket ever. Me too. I do, Me I too. do attract those bullets. <laughs> yeah. I have not figured out how that works yet. Um, and I had to jump off after about half an hour. So, yeah, that's going to – I'm going to have to spend some more time in there this week to figure this out and yeah. hopefully oh, no. earn that's some so money. Cool. Mm. I know. <laughs> but it's as gorgeous as ever. I adore this game. I'm looking so forward much. to the new gameplay modes as well because there's going to be a um, a couple of uh, new ones like a, a team of hitmen against bodyguards in an effort to mm. reach a VIP in a downed jet, apparently. Yep, extraction mode. That yeah, one is. sounds pretty cool. Nice little fun mission. So And some free mode jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, the, the organization thing. Well. Yeah. I saw two. I didn't see any more, so I'm not sure if I missed something. Hmm. Oh, mm. we will work it out when it drops. As, as with happens with all of the GTA Online expansions, there's always a few things that they don't actually announce in the text that you end up finding as you just and explore. Without a doubt, there's Christmas content as part of the download. Um, I ran by the masks place and had a look at the hats, and there were a couple of festive, just ordinary baseball caps with um, – festive messages well actually there was a choice of naughty or nice so i don't know i don't know how that's going to play in messages <laughs> yeah but um i'm sure the christmas content's now there in the game it's just got to unlock so i'm looking forward to that too i'd love to have a christmas tree and i hope they bring back the gingerbread man costume from last year because that was awesome <laughs> oh he was hilarious looking nice and creepy bring a whole new meaning to uh, icing the competition Horror, horror. <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> I applaud you, sir. I applaud you. Well done. All right. So um, in other news, we also had a little bit um, happening during the week with uh, Star Citizen. Um, so Star Citizen has uh, now raised $100 million. Sorry, I'm just going to do the, the little finger thing. $100 million. Um, no one can see the finger thing. I can see it. That's all that matters. <laughs> Um, and they've launched the uh, the Alpha 2, 2.0 version of the game as well, which um, apparently has uh, some new um, missions and uh, you know, starting to muck around with some of the first-person stuff, um, which is interesting. Now, do, do you guys actually have an interest in Star Citizen? This has been a game that's kind of been doing the rounds in the news for probably a couple of years now. So I'm curious. Um, my brother-in-law will hmm. be getting it, um, and I'm pretty sure has invested in it Mm. um so when he's playing it i'm gonna watch him and see what i think and then maybe consider getting it myself i'm I'm just not one who would kickstart i tend to wait and you know see a final product product. Yeah. yeah yeah i'm getting interested looking at some of the cast that they've um, managed to get on this mm. project though because they've got uh, voice acting and I believe um, sort of mocap being done by Mark Hamill uh, mm-hmm. Gary Oldman, Gillian Anderson there's a bunch of pretty big names there in um, sci-fi wow. so got to mm. spend that hundred million dollars somewhere yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> spend 80 of it on voice actors yeah. correct yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but is this not the game where you could spend actual money to buy a ship and then some jerk could blow it up and unless you have it insured, you have to buy a new one? Um, possibly. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but- oh, see, just... Mm, that's microtransactions <laughs> gone mental. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm curious to see how the good the game ends up being, considering just the sheer amount of money some people have dropped into it. Mm-hmm. Like, I really want it to be good. Like, don't get me wrong, I want this game to be good. And it looks cool. Like, the trailers and whatnot of the gameplay look cool. But I'm intrigued to see how well it holds up as a finished product. Mm. 
It makes me curious to actually drop in and check out EVE Online and see how different these two games are going to be because th- there seems to be some similarities to my eye. But mm. me, um, and this is a uninformed, completely just guesswork opinion from what I've seen because I've never played the game, Star Citizen appears to be a bit more action-orientated, whereas EVE is more, here's my stock market spreadsheets. Mm. Yeah, that's what I've heard. EVE, EVE Online, to play well, is spreadsheets and... and- economic theory and uh, so on and so forth, you have far less actual combat and action than what it appears Star Citizen will have, which I think is why Star Citizen might entice me. Mm. Mm. Because I need that, you know, rush of adrenaline and, and entertainment. Yeah. Well, if it's another massive sort of sandbox game that we can all collectively play in and have fun together, that could be appealing, but I don't know. what we'll have to wait and mm. see. Yeah. Um, all right. So, a Another bit of uh, esports news, uh, EA this week has just announced a new competitive gaming division that they're uh, launching, um, which is going to be led by Peter Moore, who's actually moving from Chief Operating Officer to Executive Vice President and Chief Competition Officer. So he's heading straight into the the esports uh, side of their their division. So um, looks like a big area of focus for them is going to be uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, or CSGO, as a lot of people know it. Um, Ollie, have you had any time in Counter-Strike, um, Geo? Is that something? Uh, unfortunately not. I got out of um, CS around the source just after, just before actually CSGO came on the scene. Mm. So I have not even touched CSGO, and I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I've heard great things about it, so I probably should at some point mm. because I don't have enough games to play at this point in time. I do need more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you twist my arm totally. hard enough, I can do it on the basis of research for the show. I'm okay. <laughs> oh man! As if such, you need a justification. Such a martyr. I do actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we'll hand out our homework assignments later. How's that? Mm. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, look, I think that we're, we're fast reaching the point now with, um, you know, Activision as well now getting a lot more serious about esports. We, we talked about that um, announcement recently. I think next year is going to be a year where we start to see some big players stepping into the arena and taking these things very seriously because the numbers that are getting behind esports now as a, a sub industry are just getting crazy. Like, you, you just cannot see these massively filled arenas and not think that there is something big going on here that's going to continue getting bigger. So, yeah, very exciting. It's going to uh, be interesting. Colleges in the United States having gaming athletes. Yeah, Colle- yeah. Collegiate gaming <laughs> yeah. athletes. It's well, already happening with Hearthstone. They've got collegiate gaming athletes. So Wow. Definitely. And a lot of those... Part of me is, like, really happy for mm. that that to be a thing and part of me cringes <laughs> i don't know which part's gonna win though <laughs> the, the the part that wishes it was you well yeah no, no, if it gets no. some kids some free education i think it's fantastic mm. if That's if fair, their actually. competition money can pay for their education thanks to their skills is wonderful mm. but they're gonna yeah, need to retire at like stop 20, being optimistic so they're jamie another job well <laughs> there's also gonna be you know oh i don't know some of the scandal and controversy and drama in the esports industry if that transfers over to to college or university like life <laughs> who knows yeah no imagine a world where scholarships <laughs> true imagine a world where even in the realm of nerds, there's jock nerds and nerd nerds. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I Oh, ask. God. That's the argument's about <laughs> what's a real game. Oh, my yeah, God. Oh, my God, you're a filthy casual gamer. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, you don't uh, play 20 hours a week? I'm sorry, you're officially a casual. I'm sorry, if your KD ratio is at least not 1.93, I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, the world that we have to look forward to, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my God. It is a scary, dark place. Uh, um, so Bungie has been uh, releasing a little bit of information about what is going to be coming up for Destiny in the future. Um, so it, it looks like they're moving away from the big expansion model into more of the sort of ongoing event um, sort of model, similar to what they've just done recently with the Sparrow Racing, um, which is live now. Destiny, I mean, they're going to still pump pump a whole bunch of money and time into it as uh, time goes on, and there's going to be a lot more sort of paid, um, you know, pay gate sort of content that they add over time. That's my worry. That's what I'm worried about. I, yeah, ongoing, constantly having to pay, oh, just a little bit, oh, just a little bit. 
Do, yeah. do you not prefer that though? Because I think that the the advantage to that approach is that you don't sort of have a wall when it comes to experiencing the base game. Like it, a lot of this stuff is optional extras, like extra raids and things that you can open up if you want to play, and you can pay the money if you want to play, but you don't have to. You can still enjoy the the base game without it. Uh, yeah, but if you to- don't, the base game becomes mind-numbingly boring. Oh, okay. I'm just talking on my uh, experiences. I haven't picked the game up. Oh, maybe twice in the last six months. So I'm a bit out of touch. I'm just a little concerned that, I mean, it's already, you have to invest in the latest to have a chance at new content to to keep up. I don't know. It's a shame when we've got this wonderful game like Grand Theft Auto. And I know they made a a huge amount of money. Um, and they still are making huge amounts of money. And they mm. are. And, and But you've got access to the whole of everything. Every update they've had has been free. It's phenomenal. And the updates they've have been big. They've produced so much content. Mm. And Destiny haven't. By comparison, eh. Yeah. Mm. And your it's, argument, Luke, about it going, you can still play the base game. Well, no. Essentially, what you're paying for is an incomplete game and you're then paying additional to get the whole experience. Mm. Yep. Whereas I'm, GTA, I'm just go, I buy it, I'm done. I, I, yeah. I guess I agree with you. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of just playing devil's advocate here, but um, yeah, no, I, I do get the the point of view with that. It's kind of you are investing in an ongoing promise of more to come. I think, which some people might have an issue yeah. with when it's a drip feed solution. Um, yeah. And, and it's been it poor in the past. Mm. Whereas, like to your point, Jamie, the the difference with. Um, uh, GTA Online is that everything that's been coming out is almost seen as a bonus. Like it wasn't expected. It yeah. seems like it's above and beyond. So I mean, they they got some things. It took a while for heists to come out. They were, that was promised right at the beginning. That's true. There were a few other things that didn't work straight away, but they consistently released content. It might not have been the content people wanted immediately, but it was always good content. Mm. content. Um, and you can get all of that content in game. You don't have to spend more money, but people who choose to are spending the money, which is, you know, allowing them to create more content. It's they're making it so well that it's self-perpetuating. It's just enabling them to do more and more, which is amazing. Whereas Destiny, they release such a nerfed game to start with, like with very obvious areas that were planned and then cut. It, it's, yeah, they haven't... Um, Oh, they have, they've had some trouble getting that uh, loyalty, I yeah. think, from their fan base, and I think they should be very careful pushing it. S- struggle a bit more to find their identity, I guess. Yeah, and if they keep asking for money without, I don't know, mm. providing what was promised, it's not going to work well. Yeah. That being said, I had a lot of fun playing Destiny. Yeah, so. I know. It's a, it's a damn shame because it's a really fun game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. uh, it just... Yeah, I couldn't mm. justify spending um, for the Taker King. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Myself mm. at this point. Well, something you might be able to justify, uh, given that you have already invested in the first chunk of it, is uh, <laughs> Minecraft Story Mode. Episode yeah. four's release date has been revealed. Um, so the fourth episode is going to be dropping on December 22nd, so just before Christmas. Um, I will be in Bali at that point and will brave the hotel Wi-Fi to try and obtain that. <laughs> <laughs> For which your son will be grateful. He and will he kill me. Extra charges. If I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. That release date actually has encouraged me. I mean, traveling a lot over the Christmas period, being able to download story mode to my iPad mm. and four episodes of which seems very attractive to me and I, I would not have considered it otherwise. I need something lighthearted but still involving and I think I might invest. I said it before, the yeah. downside with a lot of their other releases over the last couple of years has been the big gaps between episodes, but they've really addressed it and stepped up with Minecraft because they've had these episodes coming out in under a month with every single one. So yeah. um, They and must have listened to our podcast. What do you reckon? Nah, <laughs> yeah, because we were the only ones who said that. Um, so I was the, uh, say the engine is easy to work with, but whatever. Uh, yeah, possibly. The the, um, the fifth episode is coming in 2016. They haven't sort of said when, but if they follow on the same schedule they're on currently, I'd say January, February. But I think part of the thing that may- maybe is pushing them to complete more episodes um, often is that they've got so many licenses yet to develop games for. So it's like mm. ship them out and move on with the next one. Got to do Batman. Got to do this. Got to do that. So, yeah. 
interesting. Oh, just on the topic of Minecraft as well, because we mentioned uh, last week that it uh, has been released or is getting released later this week, actually, on uh, Wii U. Um, I made one little discovery, which kind of dampened my excitement for that a little bit. Um, it seems that the uh, the release for Wii U is actually just a direct port and not making use of the uh, the Wii U controller at all. Which that it seems very disappointing. Ridiculous. So disappointing. Because that thing is made for inventory management. The screen, the touch screen, would be perfect for inventory management. That is a massive missed opportunity. But, um, I mean, I guess that's what happens when, uh, you know, Minecraft is owned by Microsoft and putting a feature on Wii U on a competing console that's better than maybe the Microsoft version. Maybe there's a bit- Yeah, that's why I was surprised you were- yeah. about your reaction of course it's not going to be better on a competing product it just sucks that it's not for wii u owners and it's that's a common theme for wii u in general that's you, me now Hello. yeah exactly you, you'll probably find this as well Ollie. It, it is a fantastic console i love it to bits but the use of the gamepad is criminally underused like developers just do not um use it to its potential which is disappointing in well i imagine opinion. that's because a lot of games are just direct ports and they can't be bothered making it a feature and that's fair i can understand that mm. it's annoying but I can understand why. Yeah. From a point of view, I mean, we, we, I mentioned this the other day when we talked about it when we were playing Minecraft, but sometimes it's maybe also about how easy it is to develop for it. And, and one thing that, you know, I guess Xbox, while well, I'm perceiving, they have become kind of like the Apple Store. So indie games are finding it a lot easier to develop for Xbox than they are for PlayStation for whatever reason. Um, maybe the same could be said for Wii U. Maybe it's just a little bit too difficult to utilize that gamepad. Maybe it's not easy for developers to, to port and utilize it. Who knows? So it make, makes you wonder whether Nintendo are actually going to bother with something um, that sets them so far apart in the future if that's going to be the cost. Like, Correct. Why have a defining feature on a console if it's not going to get used? It just seems dumb. Exactly right. Yeah. And 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 they're not going to win people over by having a new, like you say, a new fancy feature that just feels underused. Mm. It's a bit like the um, Connect in a lot of ways. So. Exactly right. That could have been used in so many ways uh, and just again underutilized. Mm-hmm. So yep. As long as they um, keep developing Minecraft for the Hololens, because. I want that. Yeah. <laughs> I want I that like, now. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to have my morning coffee and uh, just check up on my farm and mm-hmm. harvest my wheat and stuff. That'd be neat. On my coffee table, please. Yeah. And then <laughs> just zap Luke with a bolt of lightning because, you know, God. Yeah. That would be <laughs> excellent. So if we're actually playing together, I um, won't be dropping lava on you. I'll be accidentally spilling beer on the table through the hollow lens and that'll be easy. <laughs> <laughs> mucking up our game. You better make the hollow lens waterproof. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, so um, XCOM 2, who's interested in XCOM? Oh, yes. Yes. So did you see the trailer for uh, the new XCOM 2? I have indeed. Yeah, and what were your thoughts on said trailer? I still want to play the game, and I'm annoyed it's not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you are interested in playing XCOM 2, the digital deluxe edition is now available for pre-order, so you can actually start to get on board with that, which is cool. I will probably do that. At yeah. Some point. So it's um, it includes the full game, has the official soundtrack, um, has the uh, there's a XCOM reinforcement pack as well, which um, is going to be available to purchase separately. Uh, but it's kind of like a season pass, essentially, because there's each piece of the pack is going to be released at different times over the course of next mm. year. Um, and it includes three DLC add-on packs that, you know, give different uh, game missions and different aliens and weapons and customizations for soldiers and stuff like that. So it could be interesting. Um, I actually have... And I'll, I'll save this for, for a little later, but um, XCOM is one of my must-finish before the end of the year um, tasks. I have it on my iPad, so... I'm actually going to play it on that. Should be cool. What else do we have on the list? So uh, some Nintendo stuff. We've got uh, the final um, Nintendo Direct for Smash Brothers is actually happening. I think it's today, is it? In a couple of hours, it'll be announced. There you go. So, um, And that is going to be the end of their ongoing new content support for the game, um, which will be a little disappointing for Smash fans. um, But I guess they have to pull it at some point they can't keep releasing content indefinitely it has been going for a while now but there is a large international um community that's fairly you know rabid fans of the game um and a competitive scene that uh, looks kind of interesting so um yeah i don't know got to happen at some point though i guess nintendo have other things yeah. to work on um, there's only so much content you can make for one game without essentially making a new game yeah uh, that, they have to work on that fair. rumored new console of theirs. <laughs> yeah, and they're pushing to the mobile market as well, which I'm um, mm. looking so the forward three to. Wii. The three Wii. <laughs> <laughs> that product might already be out. 
already exist. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think it does, but it's a feminine hygiene product. No, um, it's a she weed. You're mixing them up. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not on top of my wees. So. <laughs> Uh, on the related topic of Nintendo, uh, there has been a new Pokemon revealed for uh, the most recent Pokemon uh, Omega Red and uh, what is it? Omega Red and Sapphire. I forget. Someone help me out. Omega Red. And Don't look at me. I played uh, red, something blue, Sapphire. And I got Omega Red anyway. Omega Ruby. Sorry, Omega Ruby. So the Legendary actually got spoiled two years ago when uh, fans data mined the game and found pictures of it. <laughs> but they finally officially announced it and this is apparently going to be the first uh, legendary Pokemon that is actually a blend uh, fire water type which is kind of interesting it's like got some sort of steam cannon which it uses um, the whole thing looks like a toddler's teething ring though it looks really weird it does weird. look like a teething ring I'm looking at it right now that is ridiculous <laughs> oh wow that's <laughs> awkward there's no other word for it it's just awkward yep mm. Mm. Yeah, but um, for fans of Pokemon, of which I am happy to admit that I am one, it could be kind of cool. System Shock 3 is officially happening. so Yeah, that has me excited. Yeah, so what, what uh, has you excited about System Shock 3? You've obviously played um, 2. The fact that System Shock 2 existed. Yep. <laughs> the end. All right, so basically they, uh, Other Side Entertainment has confirmed that it's in development. Um, and they've got the countdown down clock that they revealed to un- unveil the news. And apparently uh, Shodan, um, which I believe is the the AI system, is that right, mm-hmm. Ollie, um, is returning as a character, which is pretty cool because that was uh, apparently one of the big twists from System Shock 2 that had a lot of people excited. Um, yeah, I'm intrigued to see how they pull that one off. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's going to be, you know, a, a, uh, a thing that allows them to maybe release a um, an updated version of System Shock 2 or System Shock so they're apparently working on a reimagined version of the original game, um, which is going to be a bit remastered. So, yeah, it could mm. be cool. Because those curious. games do look quite dated now, don't they? They're really... That's a very polite way of putting it. Yeah. Wasn't there a mod that someone did a little while ago where they updated all of the graphics in System Shock 2 to sort of meet... Yes, it was basically the HD upgrade. Yeah. They do that with a lot of old games now. They do like a HD upgrade, but unfortunately the polygons just aren't there. Right. So... It's a bit unfortunate. There's only so much you can do with retexturing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I, they wouldn't mess with the gameplay aspects at all. It's mostly just an aesthetic thing. Is that right? Well, then you're getting into some actual proper coding, and, yeah, that's not fun, depending mm. on your version of fun. Yep. Um, all right, well, and if you're looking at uh, having a bit of free time over the holiday period and uh, want some some fun games to waste it on, uh, recommend Fallout Shelter because there's a whole bunch of additions that are landing in that game today, um, such as pets, because dog meat is a thing in Fallout 4, so they've obviously decided that they need to have pets in Fallout Shelter. So, yeah. Because every game needs pets. That's right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, apparently um, dwellers now have additional flirting tactics as well. Uh, you, you have increased abilities as the overseer, so you'll be able to evict your laziest members and uh, clear your inventory quickly with uh, selling options as well. Um, and yeah, just you know, different improvements to how you manage your dwellers and uh, and bits and pieces. So I'm actually just impressed that they're still releasing content for this game because I originally thought it was just you know a, a nice um, get you by marketing push for Fallout Four, but they you know they've done really well out of it and they've actually yeah. kept content coming. So and it turns out it was popular. Yeah. Well, I think, I don't know, I, I got sick of it after not too long, it, let's face it, because there was a, a ceiling to how much you could do in the game. But, um, yeah, I don't know, it was okay. It was a fun little distraction. It was free. I guess we can't discount that. And there was some mm. in-game content you could buy, but you didn't. You definitely didn't have to. So that's one of those things. But, no, it was cool. All right, so uh, we want to introduce a new segment to the show now, which uh, we'd like to call Loaded Questions. <laughs> I want to ask you a bunch of questions, and I want to have them answered immediately. What are those? Ollie, you've got a uh, a message that we've received, um, which uh, we're going to read through, so kick it off. I now. do? Yep. Yes, I do. Aha, uh-huh, here it is. So this is from Brendan via our Facebook chat group message board thing. Yep. Uh, it goes... Hi, guys and girls. I thought I would take the time to give you some of my thoughts on the show as I'm enjoying it so far. I started listening as a fan on Luke's show, World's End Radio. I think the mix of presenters is a great balance, different skills, game interest, experience level, and importantly, different platforms. 
This makes the show relatable as I feel my opinion is always somewhere in the mix, which is nice. Mm. So, the actual question, Yay. now that I've finished pandering to us. Um, <laughs> to our ego. That's not actually in the letter, that's me. So, <laughs> I have two young boys, and in the last couple of years have found video games is a great pastime with them that I can share with them. Good on you. Um, I would love your ideas on great games to play with young kids. Thanks. Brendan. Mm. No, no. Thank you, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so he's mentioned that his two young boys are two and four, mm-hmm. which is um, pretty closely relatable to my own kids because I've got two young boys who are three and five. So, um, yeah, video games for young kids is a tricky one. And um, it's a kind of scary one as well because they're really, really good at researching things themselves, as it turns out. Uh, yep. <laughs> so, Just a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I, I told. a game called Manhunt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I them a lot of life skills. Oh yeah, yeah. Like uh, like uh, Daisy is that sort of the sort of life skills that we're talking about here? <laughs> Leisure no, suit, Larry. Of- I hear that's really good for that early four year old group. <laughs> oh dear. Educational. <laughs> dear God. Don't do that, for the love of God. Yeah, no, please, Leisure please suit, Larry. don't. Isn't the world a different place now for to, to you know that that age group when it comes to video games? Good God! Is, yeah, these it, recommendations it have been in jest. Yes. <laughs> do not listen. <laughs> it's one of those things. It's like do as I say, not as I do. Because I think I played Leisure Suit Larry for the first time when I was about eleven. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I was a bit young. Yeah. Yeah, Were you educated young. though? To be fair. Yeah. Mm. See? That's true. I was Good educated. Mm. I learned a lot about <laughs> prophylactics and uh, venereal like diseases. <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, um, like games in general, I think with the controls are uh, for kids potentially a lot more user friendly these days than they used to be. Mostly with the touch technology that's available, mm-hmm. I tend to find that a lot of the um, iPad games, especially uh, or you know just general tablet games, really cater well to to kids because they're a lot easier to control. Um, and the, the controls are often visible and very intuitive on screen, so they, they can kind of get the hang of it really quickly rather than having like an Xbox One controller in their hands which has a million buttons and they just can't quite get their head around where everything is. So mm. that's a there tricky one. There is one problem with this question, though, unfortunately. Mm. He doesn't say what platforms he has. No, that's true. Well, that's that is okay. True. You can you can be general or or make varied recommendations mm. or just I mean, cause it's, because that's on everything. So. Yes. Mm. Well, that would be one of mine. <laughs> but yeah. um, other people listening will be on various platforms too. So, well, I yeah, guess, suggestions all around. I, I, I can be speak very useful. I can speak to what sort of you know Ben spends the most time playing and what he's gotten the most value out of. I guess because I think that's probably a, a pretty good guide as to what I think works. Minecraft is high up on the list, obviously. Mm. Um, because it really is a fantastic game for all ages. We enjoy it a heap as adults, and it's great for kids, and that means that it's great for adults playing with kids, which I've done quite a bit as well. And the wonderful thing is you can cater it to the difficulties to to those playing. If you don't want monsters to spawn at night, you can create a peaceful version of the game mm. um, that doesn't have the monsters in it. Or you can go creative mode if if finding the resources is too difficult and all they want to do is just build with blocks. Yeah, you can really adjust the playability to, to, to however the kids want to play and and watch their imaginations make some astonishing things. Mm. Yeah, and there's also the other version of it, which is quite popular, which is the – is it Terraria or Terrarium? Terraria, Terraria. I believe. Yeah. Terraria. Yeah. yeah. Everyone said it differently. Hooray. Hooray. <laughs> Good night, team. Diversity. Mm. <laughs> nice. It's a, more of a, a 2D um, – version of the game oh yeah um, Terraria is a concepts. bit more action orientated yeah it yeah. would be a little trickier i think for for young uns yeah, so i would young. agree with that yeah yeah mm. yeah no I, the cool thing with minecraft too is that if you do have adults involved in that equation they can build things um at an appropriate skill level for the kids also yeah. so, so you can build like challenge maps and uh you know various different you know it's almost like designing mario maker levels in a way you know um, that mm. they can play around in little sandboxes and, and stuff like that, and and you don't have to be an expert either. Learning the game along with your kid would be such a wonderful experience. I can only imagine. Mm. It's it's genuinely fun. Yeah, well, I, I literally got into the game because Ben did, so mm. and then infected everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's. I think you hit on a good point then, and you know, I don't have kids of my own, so my opinion is not valid in this space, but. Uh, I feel very strongly that if I did have kids that I would love to play games with them or seek out games that, 
you know, like you mentioned, the the making a level, the Mario Maker, I think, is great. And for me, that Mario it's Maker on. is really good. Mm. Yeah, and so you as a parent could create a level for them and then you can sit and watch them play it. You can gear it to their interest levels and you can make it look like, you know, their favorite things or, you know, uh, exclude uh, mobs or include them and something like that. But I think that being involved, and it sounds like Brendan probably is, uh, whilst your kids are playing games, I think is great. Some of my best memories have been you know, when I used to play games and my sort of my dad would do the difficult bits and we'd do the easy parts where we were too young to play some of the other games. And that, I think that's really important. And I'm sure Brendan already does that. Yeah. I'm going to make another massive recommendation too, and this covers quite a few games. I would highly recommend almost any of the Lego games. That Damn was going it. to be my other Who suggestion. Who my suggestion? Yeah. <laughs> Lego well, they're they're yeah. winners. All They're of them. such winners. They're so good. They're so, mm. so mm-hmm. good. Yeah. Like I think um, now collectively between the two of us, Ben and I have played through uh, all of the Lego Star Wars, all of the Lego Batmans, the Lego Avengers, um, Lego Harry Potter. Uh, Indiana Jones? We haven't done Indy. No, we haven't done that Ooh. one yet. Um, we what haven't, about Lego Dimensions? Not yet. That's Christmas present, so he hasn't unwrapped that yet. <gasps> Shh, so, don't, don't listen. listen. No, he won't listen. <laughs> <laughs> don't let them listen to this podcast. <laughs> no. <Nah, that's laughs> Ever. Um, I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be really fun. Uh, but, yeah, like the, the thing about the Lego games is that they are kind of 3D platformers in a way um, with a puzzle element, but the puzzles are reasonably intuitive. They're not too difficult. The controllers are fairly basic. There's only you know a certain number of functions. And um, the game is really intuitive with the building stuff as well. Like to actually build in Lego in the Lego computer games, a lot of it's kind of automated. So mm. it's not like you have, you know, 100% free roam controls over putting X block on Y block sort of thing. Um, a lot of it's kind of pre-scripted in a way, but um, yeah. It's very destructive though. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You, you smash everything into yeah. little Lego blocks that you can. But it's safe destruction too. It's not like, you know, blood spattering on screen and stuff like yeah, that. So. Yeah, And the humour in the games is spot on. Like the jokes it's are great. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, but the thing that's really impressed me is the, the depth that they go into as well. And I think um, the one that really knocked it out of the park for me was uh, Lego Batman 3 Beyond Gotham. Some of the stuff in that game was just crazy. They had uh, all of the Adam West um, sort of Batman era stuff, uh, like including the car and all the actors and the skins and that sort of thing. Um, they even had uh, Jay and Silent Bob in the game. I kid huh. you not. Yeah. Wow. It was amazing. Oh, well, hang on. Was it Jay and Silent Bob? No, it was Kevin Smith. It was actually Kevin Smith as Kevin Smith. So <laughs> a Lego version of him. Playing the original character. Yeah. Um, Deadpool <laughs> rocks up in some of the Marvel ones and he's, you know, suitably, uh, you know, breaking the fourth wall sort of stuff in game, which is cool. Um, yeah. No, they're just really clever. I love them a lot. They're really, really cool. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys have any other suggestions or thoughts? No. Everyone stole mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would also add in there, um, just from limited experience, the Skylanders and Disney Infinity are really good. Mm. And it's great for younger kids because – when their siblings are playing, you know, you can involve, say, for example, two kids because there's a physical toy involved um, and they can feel like they're helping by choosing characters and and things like that and, and being involved and making it sort of a group activity. Mm. Um, and then obviously when, you know, the TV's not on, they can still play with the uh, characters themselves. And I don't see Skylanders or Disney Infinity closing down anytime soon. They just keep coming out with new booster packs and, new bits and bobs, but of course that's all console based. When you're talking about PC, that becomes a little bit more difficult because of course you can't really dumb down the controls a whole lot. Mm. Um, But anything that would be a puzzler, I think would be age appropriate. So you're going to find a whole bunch of puzzle games out there for younger kids. Well, you you definitely can have kids playing on PC with, you know, console controllers. Um, True, true. Makes it easier. But I think the, the PC barrier to entry for a lot of younger kids is the whole you know, set up and loading of games because it's hard for them to sort of search around and, you know, obviously buy things on Steam and download software and all that sort of stuff. Whereas with a console, you just put a disc in the machine. So, yeah. Yeah. That's also true. Yeah. you There would be a lot more involved. I mean, having a kid on a PC, it's a lot harder to lock down, you know, the internet and parent controls and things on a PC if you're going to leave mm. kids to play um, as, as you walk away. Mm. Uh, <laughs> YouTube is a great example of that. Oh, dear God, YouTube. <laughs> My God. So, yeah. 
the um the other day uh, Ben came home from uh, from school and uh, said to me, "Hey Dad, I found a, a, a video for this cool new game on YouTube. I was wondering if you could get it." And I was just like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What's it called?" He says, "Yeah, it's called Five Nights at Freddy's." And I was just like, "Oh shit." <laughs> <laughs> nope nope i'm gonna nope, nope out of that <laughs> solid nope yeah but he's been going on about it i would not even it. play that game uh yeah that's because it's a bad game mm. sorry pissed off our authority <laughs> yeah. yeah i've not played it yet but i know enough about it so yeah, yeah. Uh, final note i would say anything retro so go find Bomberman. Uh, if you have an Xbox or a PS, <laughs> go find Bomberman, go find Mario. Those games were not in an era where you'd have to worry so much and they were made for universal sort of audiences or kid audiences. So anything retro, like a Spyro or something, I can't believe I'm referring to Spyro as retro. That Yay. makes you feel old. Well, you know Spyro's you know, in Skylanders as well. Yeah. Mm. So stuff like that will always be good. Tetris. In- Tetris? Tetris is a great one, Jamie. Pong. Pong and Pac-Man and, yeah, okay, old Yeah, school. so all of these games and the good thing about, you know, us now is if we're at the age of being parents is that we can say this is a game I played when I was a kid and, and your kid can sit there and bag it. Back in it my day. <laughs> yeah. Back in my day, we had to play Pac-Man and with no saves. Uphill yes. both ways. <laughs> 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 No, I, I think the key is not to assume that kids are going to be bad at games because they're kids because sometimes they surprise Correct. you. Yeah, um, your exactly eldest. Right. Oh, my goodness. Mm. You have to be careful when he's around on Minecraft. That is right. Yeah, because he just wants to blow us up. Yep. Mm. yep. Well, and hey, Imogen, just want to come. You have dad. to come over here. You have to come over to Dad's temple and do the temple. That's mm. all I get told. Yeah. Uh, I tried. I did try, Ben, and uh, I died. So... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we all died. That's, that's not going to happen. Uh, no, um, yeah, no. I, I, obviously, kids are different. It, I think that you, you you'll find what is their interest if you just try a few different things. But the best thing I think as a parent, even if you're not a massive gamer, is you know, and assuming that you're listening to this show, you probably are, um, <laughs> is just to be involved. Like actually take an interest in what your kid's doing, and and if you can play it with them, because they're going to get a lot more out of it if they're playing with a parent than just playing a game by themselves. I think that's yeah, good memories. Better experience. I have so many happy memories of playing with my dad. So hmm. do it. Yeah. Be that parent. <laughs> that's right. Cool. Cool. So um yeah, what uh what else did we want to just wrap up on? We're obviously heading into the silly season. We've got some Christmas break and leave and stuff coming up. So um, do we want to quickly talk about our plans over that period? That's a good plan. Also, obviously, we're all going to be away and everything else. So lots of time in between. So Ollie's mentioned a couple of things already that he's going to look at purchasing. And, and well, I've already you, purchased Undertale. So Undertale. <laughs> I'm going to be uh, looking at um, Telltale. It's probably going to be what I sort of hit up and and catch up on for sure. How about you, Jamie? Um, well, I just purchased Undertale also. I'm also hearing some wonderful things about some Armour 3 mods that some of my relatives are playing. So there's a possibility I might delve into some combat simulation stuff mm. wow um, i have never heard of that game I oh it's a, a it's a Good military game. simulator it's it's extraordinary Ooh. um daisy the <laughs> daisy mod and standalone were based on armor 2 mods oh, so okay. it's yeah so that's a possibility for me um other than that i've just got so many to play i'll probably end up by the time we record again picking up halo 5 and tomb raider and just cause 3 and I'm uh, sure there's a couple more. Oh, I can't help it. Mm. You have to yeah, pick up Halo 5 so you can play with me. Yes, yes, <laughs> 100% yes. In fact, that's probably going to be before the week is out. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <We> can set. <laughs> Woohoo. Nice. You think you'll finish uh, Fallout over the Christmas break, Ollie? Oh, yes, yeah. easily. Is that top of the can list? Can you ever finish it? I don't know that you can ever finish it. Um, <laughs> they'll definitely reach a point where I go, if you can compare, finish going past the main quest because i haven't finished the main quest i don't think if you can play after the main quest then at some point i will go yep i'm done wow so Mm -hmm. see how we go i'm not planning on finishing fallout this year i think i'm gonna let that one simmer for a little while longer um i don't have the urge to to sort of crank through the main story i'm happy to sort of jump into it you know when i feel the whim um Mm. on and off so that'd be cool. But uh, one game that I do want to finish in the uh, the next month or so is uh, Metal Gear Solid Five. 
So I actually want to finish the main story of that and uh, play it through to its conclusion because that is a freaking awesome game and I actually feel kind of bad about the fact that I got distracted from it um, when it was just starting <laughs> to get really good. I feel the same about Witcher 3. Yeah, well, actually, oh, oh, god damn it. Oh, that's a game you should finish, Luke. Well, I haven't yeah, even started it yet. Add that to the list. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> that's like five now. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. So I'm um, at the end of this this. week um, jumping on a plane with the family uh, to head to Bali for uh, Christmas. So it's actually going to be my first Christmas away from Perth ever, uh, which is kind of cool. And although I'm going to be, you know, spending time with the family and eating and drinking and being merry, and I've got a whole bunch of uh, rallies heading over as well. Both my sisters are going to be there, some of the in-laws and extended family as well. Um, I'm no doubt going to have some time for gaming because I still do that thing where I don't sleep. Um, so <laughs> I've got a few things I want to knock off. Um, I'm going to get Tales from the Borderlands, I've decided. So after he- hearing so many good things about uh, that Telltale series during the year, I'm going to download a- that onto my iPad before I leave and hopefully play through that on the plane, um, which will be good. Um, I am also going to put XCOM um, Enemy Unknown back on my iPad. And I've heard very good things about the iPad port. I actually bought it like a year ago and never played it because I got distracted. Um, but apparently it holds pretty true to the PC original. So, um, and the PC ooh. version is very solid. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm hearing too. So, And I did pay like 20 or 30 bucks for it when I bought it. So I should probably play that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you've probably lined this up already, Luke, but you do know that a lot of villas and stuff in Bali do have access to consoles. There's also an organization over there. You can rent them. I, I will look that up for you and I will send that to you. Okay, cool. <laughs> nice. I'm not sure it'll be necessary, but um, yeah, I, I mean, we'll definitely check it out if we get time. It's more about sort of keeping the uh, wife's wrath at bay when it comes to that sort of thing. Oh, I was thinking more for the kids, not for you. Oh, no, no, even for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, Don't you play. You're supposed to be having fun. Well, young work. Benjamin is uh, getting a uh, 3DS for Christmas as well. So oh, excellent. He won't Lucky. actually get that until partway through the holiday, though, so he'll open it over there. We've got a stack of games for him on that. He's got uh, Super Mario uh, 2 on it, Super Mario Land 2, I believe. We've got uh, Animal Crossing. I'm curious as to how that's going to go with him, <gasps> actually. Animal Crossing. I love Animal Crossing. <laughs> yep. Um, so that I don't know if he'll be... like it. Oh, yeah, I don't know either. I don't no, know. I think he will. Mm. I think he will. There's a lot to do. I think so. I think so. I think... Uh... So many shoes to collect. So many. <laughs> and oh. he's got to pluck all the weeds. Well, hopefully he keeps up with the reading <laughs> sort of comprehension elements of the game. I don't know how much there is, but he's still sort of at the level where he's you know not 100% on that. So it might impact the enjoyment a little bit. That's probably the one thing that I've uh, you know wanted to hold back on getting him playing Pokemon for. Um, so far, because there's a fair bit of reading in that game once you go through the entire thing. Yeah. So. Oh, well, then that'll be a good intro, mm. like a lead-in. Yeah, possibly. I think it'll be a good test. He'll tester. be learning to read without even knowing he's doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Sneaky. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm going to try and play through Monument Valley as well, because I picked that up free last week. Um, oh, me too. I did not buy that. Yeah. That does oh. not sound like my type of game. <laughs> also, um, for those of you who haven't had enough uh, of the Room stuff, um, apparently the Room 1 is free at the moment on uh, iOS download. Ooh. So there you go. And it's only on sale for three weeks, I believe. So. Oh, want to do, cool. want to do more than that? Grab it and uh, download it. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my iPad? Find my iPad. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I realized in talking to you guys that now I have the Xbox, my list of games to buy. So I didn't end up getting the Xbox that had Tomb Raider on it uh, because we live in Perth and uh, a train carrying pretty much everything interesting over to Perth for Christmas. Uh, All of Christmas. All of Christmas was on this train. So anything with a battery was on this train. (laughs) So uh, my Xbox was probably on this train. So not only did we lose all the cargo on that train, but we also had delays, and that means that a lot of parcels for Perth, Western Australia, will be delayed and will not make it in time for Christmas, which is not a good situation for our poor folks at Australia Post, who I'm sure are doing their best. Uh, But I was very lucky in that where I purchased my Xbox from was very understanding of the time of year and organized for me to pick one up today. So rather than getting the bundle, the Tomb Raider bundle, I got the uh, Halo 5 um, Elite Exclusive Edition, uh, which is a $200 saving for me. (laughs) So I am not complaining. And it's pretty. Yeah, it's so pretty. Just I had no idea I could be in love with the actual console because everything in my house is sort of (laughs) hidden away, no cables, nothing like that. Uh, But this thing is a thing of beauty, all very beautiful chrome and blue, and I I like it very much. It even came with a model to build, 
which I don't know what I'm doing. It's made of metal, so I might need your guys' help with that. Yeah, you've got um, two pros right here. These mm-hmm. guys. Hello. I think I might know some people who are good at models. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, so that will be really cool. And I've taken it as a sign from the universe that I need to play Halo 5. So uh, mm-hmm. I will be getting into that, and we'll hopefully, by the time we reach the new year, uh, not be as shit at first person shooters? <laughs> Question mark. Uh, but I did say I do still want to pick up Tomb Raider. I want to pick up Witcher 3. I want to pick up Ori on the Xbox because I prefer playing games like that sitting down in a relaxed position. Uh, and there was something else I was going to buy. I've forgotten what it was. Uh, but I am looking forward to getting in and amongst that as well as, you know, getting some of the older games that Xbox now has available um, from the Xbox 360 titles that I have so loved and enjoyed. Yeah. Very much looking forward to setting that up properly and getting a chance to play it, learning what it means to be an Xbox One owner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Will you can be, be an X owner. Yeah, and having some serious <laughs> FOMO while I'm on holiday because you guys will all be like, so who wants to jump on Heroes of the Storm? Oh, my God, I'm level a million. Imogen will be so far behind. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I won't be. And <laughs> I come back from from Christmas and being overseas and everything else. So yeah. So on, on that topic, we are going to take a one week break from the show over Christmas. It is a necessity, unfortunately, because a couple of us are going to be overseas, and uh, you know. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> um, but we will be returning in the last week of December, so just before the new year. Um, and we've got some fun plans on that day, so we're actually going to record a show and all play uh, Her Story together, um, mm. which should be a lot of fun. Ooh, bit the of a, arguments we will have. Yeah. It's going to be glorious. <laughs> bit of a, bit of a party-loaded sure well Christmas party. Yeah. Beforehand, so there's no uh, hanger. Um, and that we all no 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 but that just detracts from the entertainment for everybody else yeah <laughs> just make we're everyone gonna, we're gonna record everyone. everything yeah <laughs> it's gonna be funny i'm so looking forward to that day so it's if i disappear good. before the new year it's because i've been killed <laughs> <laughs> my opinion in no the I'm, uh, i think hmm, i think luke might be the one who'd disappear <laughs> really mm. Mm. it doesn't sound good mm. do you know something i don't <laughs> <laughs> oh, just, just you know, the puns. Oh, okay, yeah. If, if we're in the same room, I mean, because we'll be recording live together too, yep. so we're if in a room together. Like, I can't smack you through the internet, even though I threaten to. I, I may have had my fill by then from Undertale, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. And yeah. you know what? If we have to guess who the killer is, we already know Jamie's the werewolf, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly Damn right. it. <laughs> <laughs> Always with yes. these accusations. Called it back. Called it back. Uh, uh, plus one point for me. Yeah. Imaginary point. <laughs> you don't want to be, if you don't want to wear these labels, Jam, you just got to shave more often. It's as simple as that. Oh, yeah. oh wow. That was <laughs> a low, 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 Luke. <laughs> Boo. Oh, sorry. All right. Anyway, we should probably leave it there. So, uh, in the meantime, if you want to get hold of us um, and please send in some questions for our loaded questions, you can hit us yes. up at email, mail at partyloaded.com. Uh, we are on Facebook, of course, at facebook.com slash partyloaded. Uh, you can also tweet us on the Twitters at Party Loaded Show. And uh, yeah, check out the main show blog at partyloaded.com for this episode and all other episodes and uh, general updates and happenings there. And yeah, we've got some fun stuff to look forward to over the next week. Uh, like I said, we will be back in two weeks' time, which I believe puts us at the 30th of the month. Um, the next episode mm. should go up. Um, sure. Yeah. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy holidays. Happy games. Have a great Enjoy festive your games. <laughs> yeah. Play more games. <laughs> and we'll okay. see you soon. Bye. 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 The Party Loaded Podcast is a Channel Endgame production. For this and more great gaming content, bookmark channelendgame.com. <laughs>